All right. I think we're on. I don't see anybody else there, though. I'm on. I got, I'm pulled up just like a regular day of your life. Good. See if anybody responds. <laughs> It is spring break. <laughs> Maybe nobody shows up. It's you go live, it automatically alerts anybody. We got like 230 followers. Yeah. It's okay. It is spring break, and just wanted to give, give an opportunity. It says five watching now. Oh, okay. see anybody All right. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm here to take your questions about our reopening plans for um, coming back to school on April the 5th. We're very excited to welcome students back into our building. Um, so I'm here to answer questions. If you have any anything that you are concerned about or anything that you just want to know more about, I'm, I'm happy to answer your questions. You write them in the chat. While we're waiting for people to join, I'm just going to go over some of the basic information. Um, if you received your child's report card, there were some different um, communications inside of the report card. 
And one of them had specifics about our um, return to school plan, things that are specific to Fairdale. Um, so if you haven't seen that document, I encourage you to pull that out of the report cards um, and check it out. We also have a website set up, um, which Mr. Burden is going to share the link to in the chat, um, a website that has all the information that you need about a return. Um, Ms. Farmer asked about bus schedules. So the district will release bus schedules tomorrow. If you go to the um, JCPS webpage, there will be a box that is for you to check bus finder to find out your bus route. Um, they have asked that those that we not send anybody there until April 1st. So they'll be, a, they should be available to you tomorrow on the website for bus routes. And if you have any problems, please give us a call. Um, we are working here this week, so you can give us a call and we'll happily help you with a, with a bus route if you need one. Um, nope, no parking passes this year, Dana. You don't have, uh, Nick doesn't have to have a parking pass. He can park for free for the remainder of the year. <laughs> I oh, know. It is yay. We're so excited to have kids back in the building. I can't tell you how happy we are to welcome everybody on Monday. We are so looking forward to it. That is the parking pass for this year. Like Mr. Burden said, we will be taking temperatures and as long as they're less than 100.4, that's their parking pass. <laughs> Um, we did send out a map, a, a traffic map. So um, if you do have a student driver, you'll want to check the traffic map to make sure that he or she knows where to come in to park. Um, we have had to set up different entrances for kids um, who are student drivers, for our car riders and walkers, and then our bus riders. So please check out that map. If you um, haven't seen that there was a copy of it in with the report card and it's also available on the website so check out the website because the parking map is right there for you to see um, all of the entrances and where kids will be asked to park All right, any other questions? I'm gonna talk a little bit about our schedule tonight. I know people have questions about how the schedule will work. Um, we are working on re-engaging all students in a regular school schedule. So um, for our in-person learners, uh, if you are in group A, students will be at school in person on Mondays and Tuesdays. Um, they uh, and then on Wednesdays, you will have an asynchronous day, which means that um, group A learners are not required to log in on Wednesdays or Thursdays. Those are both asynchronous days for group A uh, students, um, but you are required to log in on Fridays. There will be assignments that will be due at the end of each period on Friday. Um, for virtual learners, students who are virtual learners, they will have asynchronous days on Mondays and Thursdays, um, which means that those students are not required to log in at any specific time on those days. Any work that they do on their schoolwork, they will do on their time at their pace. Um, so no required login on Mondays and Thursdays for virtual learners, um, but virtual learners will be required to be logged in on Tuesday to turn in work at the end of each class period. And on Wednesday for a live instruction with their teachers, and then on Friday for um, work to be completed and assessments to be completed at the end of each class period. So they have three days a week that they're logged in. Students who are in group B will be in person at the school on Thursday and Friday. Um, they will be required to log in online on Tuesdays. So everybody gets three days a week of instruction and time um, to do assignments and to do things in groups. Um, three days a week. So everybody is engaged um, in synchronous learning three days a week and asynchronous learning two days a week.
Um, confused about the schedule when a person's students need to be on NTI. Is their class on Wednesdays? Can you just go over the schedule? Um, I think I, I think I just answered your questions. If I didn't, if you have a specific one, I'd be happy to revisit it. Just drop it in the um, chat box. And um, or you can always send me an email too, and I'm, I'm happy to explain more specifically for your student if you would like that. I, I can do that too over email. Um, but like I said, if you are a group A student, you will be in person at the school on Monday and Tuesday. Um, if and Wednesday and Thursday will be your asynchronous days, meaning that you're working on things in, in your own time at your own pace on those two days. And then you're required to be online from 7.40 to 2.20 on Fridays. If you are a virtual learner, you will be online Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. If you are a Group B in-person learner, you will be online on Tuesday. You'll be in person Thursday and Friday. So everybody has three days a week where they are on a 740 to 220 um, schedule and have work to do at the that's due at the end of every class period, whether they're in person or virtual on those three days a week. And then everybody has two days of asynchronous learning that are a little more fluid and can be worked at the student's pace. They have three synchronous days, yes. So basically three days with teacher, you know, you have a teacher, you have work that's due at the end of the class period, and then the other two days are, wor are work days, but you do those at your own pace and independently. So some flexibility there on those two days. It'll be five days worth of work, but it'll be three days where you're online at a specific time. Uh, the other questions that, I, that I've had that I've received some emails about that I'll go over today is about arrival and dismissal. So um, arrival, students who ride the bus will catch their bus and they'll arrive whenever the school bus arrives at school. Any car rider or walker um, will be allowed to come into the building at 7 a.m. Um, in the past, we've allowed students to come in as early as 6.45, but with our new requirements to take temperatures and, uh, you know, to check everybody before they come into the building, we can't do that before 7 o'clock. So car riders and walkers and student drivers will not be allowed to enter the school until 7 a.m. So that's kind of important. You might have to adjust some scheduling um, if you're planning on driving your student to school or if your student is planning to drive to school, they cannot arrive or be admitted to the building until 7 a.m. As far as dismissal is concerned, um, kids will be dismissed in stages. So uh, bus riders, first run bus riders will be dismissed first, and then we will dismiss car riders and student drivers. Um, and then we'll go back and um, dismiss our second run bus riders um, when the second run buses arrive to the school. Um, but I wanted to make sure that everybody understood that it, it won't be one big release at 220. It'll be a staged release um, allowing bus riders to catch their buses first and then we'll dismiss car riders and then student drivers um, so that we have a gradual release rather than everybody being released all at one time. Um, and then again, like I said, arrival in the morning, seven o'clock is the earliest that students can arrive at school. Um, yes, if your student has a Chromebook, we ask that they bring it back and forth. Um, we will have some Chromebooks here at school for students who have been using at-home devices or for students, you know, if they forget their Chromebook, um, we will have a few here on site that can be used in the classroom. But we do ask that if your student has a, you know, has a Chromebook that's been issued by the school that they do bring that back and forth with them. Um, Kids can use their personal devices. So if your kid has an iPad or, um, you know, a tablet or something like that, that they've been using at home um, and that is transportable, they can bring that to their uh, to school as well and log into our network. So, um, yes, please bring the Chromebook back and forth. I don't have enough in the building for everybody to have one, but we do have some in case we have students who are using, you know, home computers or who um, forget theirs for the day. We will have some here on site for use. Um, kids will go straight to their first period classes when they arrive. 
They, uh, we have some breakfast kiosks. So if they want to grab breakfast, they'll be able to grab it and take it with them to their first period class. But yes, they will go to first period directly. Um, if you have a student who has back building, uh, the tech building for first period, they still have to come through the front of school. They won't be able to be dropped off in the back and they will have to come in through the main doors and have temperatures checked before they're allowed to proceed to, to building three. So, um, and kids will be walking back and forth from the main building to building three. It's about a five minute walk. Um, it's not too bad. We've practiced. All of us have taken a, a slow trip and we've walked fast and slow to make sure everybody can make it. Um, so everybody can make it back and forth to the from the back building to the main building uh, in five minutes or less. And they will be walking. So they need to dress appropriately. If it's raining, you want to make sure they have a raincoat or an umbrella. If it's cool, make sure they have a jacket or a sweater, a sweatshirt. Um, just to, you know, keep in mind that they will be doing that walk every day if they have a class in that, in the back building. Any other questions? Um, we have two different uh, lunch areas set up. So the cafeteria is one of them. Um, we've split lunches between the, the cafeteria cafeteria and our new makeshift cafeteria in the small gym. So uh, some kids will have lunch in the cafeteria and some will have it in the small gym. Do they get extra time to get to their next class from building three? Um, yes, we're, we have turned off um, bells because we won't actually have um, you know, downtime in the hallways, we're going to ask kids to keep moving all the time to go directly from one class to another. Um, so we will adjust the time to start class um, if kids are coming from the back building or going to the back building as well. Uh, time will be adjusted to make sure they have plenty of time to get there before class gets started. Yeah, I'm glad Mr. Burden brought that up. Students will be assigned, uh, they'll get to choose, but they will be assigned whatever seat they choose. They will they will be in that seat for, for the remainder of the school year um, for contact tracing purposes. So we can make sure that we have some uh, knowledge of who's around who in the building. Any other questions about arrival, dismissal, schedule? Uh, no, we will not be assigning lockers this year. Um, lockers are a choice anyway. Um, we only give lockers to students if they want one. Most of our kids don't, don't use lockers in a normal school year. Um, but this year, we won't be doing any locker assignments at all. Um, good news is, is that students don't have as much to carry um, because we also didn't give out very many textbooks. So um, you should be able to get everything you need in class. Um, most of everything you need is on, on a Chromebook or your um, computer. So um, we should be good without having lockers this year, but we're not going to assign any lockers this year. Uh, the band and orchestra kids will be able to drop their instruments off at the band or orchestra room. Uh, they will not be able to be dropped off in the morning there. They will still have to come through the main doors to have their temperature taken, whether they ride the bus or come in as a car rider. Um, but they will have time to walk their instruments to the orchestra or band building to drop them off. 
So um, they won't have to carry those around with them all the time. They're instruments if they're in band or orchestra, but they do have to come in through the main building in the morning to enter school and then they'll have time to go and go and drop those off. Yes, it's fine to carry backpacks. Absolutely. Um, oh, yeah, Mr. Burton brought up a good point talking about the restroom. So um, just so everybody knows, our bathrooms will be locked during uh, class change. Um, students will be able to go to the bathroom during class time. Um, we have people on each floor to escort students to the bathroom. For social distancing purposes, we can only have two people in the restroom at a time so that we can keep on track keep on track with that, we have someone who will escort students to the restroom and make sure that social distancing occurs and that we don't have too many people in there at one time. Um, so the restrooms will be locked at class change when, when we exchange classes, um, but they, we will have escorts available to take you know, students to the restroom during class time. And all of the teachers have been made aware that the restrooms will be locked at class change and that they will have to let kids use the restroom during class time with a uh, security or administrative um, person helping them, you know, make sure that we keep the social distancing in place and that the bathrooms aren't too full. That is a good, good thing. I forgot to mention that. Um, yes, and students can bring water bottles, um, only water. We're not allowing for um, anything other than that in, in classrooms, um, but they can. We have water filling stations for any students that want to uh, bring a water bottle and, and have access to water throughout the day because the water fountains themselves, um, we're discouraging kids from drinking, obviously, out of the water fountains, but we have put in water bottle filling stations so students can fill up water bottles. So if they want to bring a water bottle from home, they can do that and they can use that throughout the school day for, for water. Any other questions that I can uh, maybe address that you're not sure about? Again, I, when you got your student's um, report card for second trimester, included in there were a number of different um, communications regarding our return to in-person school. There's a page called Fairdale Specifics that has some information that's specific about Fairdale High School and our return to in-person learning. Um, there's also some information there about um, a parking map so that you know where kids will be dropped off and picked up and where buses will unload and, and load in the afternoons. Um, information about arrival and dismissal in that communication as well. Um, a copy of our schedule, anything that you might need, um, you should be able to reference from those um, communications that were included with the report card. But if you need them, um, we do have all of it posted on our school webpage. We've set up a special webpage just for the return to school. And uh, so that you, know, you can go over some of that information with your students. There are some videos there as well um, so that kids can see what you know, it's going to look like in their classrooms, what it's going to look like at lunch, what the hallways will look like. Um, we've put markers in the hallway uh, on the floor and on the walls to indicate, you know, spacing, appropriate spacing between students um, to help us with social distancing protocols. Um, we've also, you know, placed things in the cafeteria to make sure that, you know, only certain seats at the tables are used. So kids will need to pay attention to that and, and you know, sit in the appropriate seats in the cafeteria. And our makeshift caf cafeteria, which is now in the small gym, um, students who have PE will do that in the large gym. PE will be in the large gym instead of the small gym for the remainder of the year um, because the small gym is being used as a, as a second cafeteria so that we can space kids out during lunch. Um, but all the information you need will be in the will be in that communication and on, available on the website. If you have any questions, you can see all of it there with lots of fun videos by our assistant principals. <laughs>
Um, will they have hot lunch or sack lunch? It will be a limited lunch. Um, I, I'm not going to say that it's all cold because some of it is is a warm lunch, um, but it is a limited menu. So um, there will be some warm items, um, probably more that can be grab and go, um, but it there are some warm items that will be served for lunch. Um, breakfast will be all grab and go. There won't be any kind of hot breakfast served, but we will have breakfast in our um we have different kiosks set up around the school for kids to grab breakfast and take the first period. Again, there will be some hot items for lunch, um, but it is a limited menu for lunch because there won't be serving lines. Yes, and kids are definitely welcome to bring their own lunch. Um, I will also mention that we have limited visitors for the remainder of the school year. So um, we will not be having any outside visitors in the building. Uh, the only people who will be in the building will be students, teachers, and staff. Uh, and then anytime that we call uh, a family and ask for a family to come, obviously we'll have um, uh, admit those parents and guardians into the building as necessary. But the goal for the remainder of the year is to definitely limit our visitors to essential members only. Um, we're not doing any classroom visitors this year. We're not doing any kind of shadowing or anything like that. Um, I hate that because part of the one of the best things about school is are the visitors and community members we're able to bring into the building to talk to kids. But for the remainder of the school year, we're not going to have any visitors just to protect all of our students and our staff. Um, if you have a student that you need to pick up for an early dismissal, you'll do that at the attendance office. We have a window at the attendance office that you can do everything from outside through the window. You don't even have to come in the building to sign your student out. We will not be doing any early dismissals past 2 p.m. So if you have, if your child has a doctor's appointment and you need to pick them up early, you need to make sure that you're here well, uh, well before 2 p.m. Um, because we won't be doing any early dismissals after 2 p.m. Uh, that's the norm anyway, but we're going to be very careful with that this year so that we can make sure that we have um, everything in place for dismissal since we're doing a stage dismissal. So um, just keep in mind that any early dismissals will have to be before 2 p.m. and you will have to sign your student out at the attendance office. The same thing for late arrivals. Any students who arrive late to school um, in the mornings will have to check in through the attendance office and have their temperatures taken at the window by the uh, staff in the attendance office before they'll be able to come into the school building. So all of, all of our attendance things will happen down there through the window, which is actually kind of nice. You don't have to come into the building. All right, any other questions? Mr. Barton, will you link the web page there again just for anybody who needs it? I don't think I have it pulled up. This is a link to the Fairdale Specifics document that has information about schedule and um, arrival dismissal, just specifics to our school that are important for you to know. Um, in case you didn't see that in the, in the report card, uh, the, all the specifics and the schedule and everything you need are on that sheet. And also available on our website. Um, 
we are going to try to um, encourage teachers to take classes outside when the weather is nice um, so that they can get outside and, and get some breathing room and just, you know, it's a it's a lot to go from, you know, not wearing a mask at home during the day to having to wear a mask the entire school day. So we want to try to get them as much fresh air as possible. So we will be encouraging classes to go outside and to, you know, spread out and to get some fresh air and, and a little relief from wearing a mask all day. Um, because students will be required to have a mask on, um, you know, for the entire school day. They can take their masks off while they're eating, and then they, uh, but they have to stay in their seats. They can't get up and move around. So um, it'll it'll be quite an adjustment. Everybody getting used to having masks on all day. Uh, so we are encouraging classes to go outside whenever possible to enjoy some fresh air. So tell them to dress accordingly. <laughs> dress for the weather. Yes, they can carry their own sanitizer. Um, we're actually going to give them all sanitizer too. So um, we have some hand sanitizer to hand out here at school. And we have some uh, Fairdale face masks for all of our kids. So everybody will get that. Uh, if they're coming back for in-person learning, they'll get that on the on the first day they're here. And um, we do encourage them to carry some hand sanitizer if they want to. Um, we'll also have hand sanitizer available in every classroom. Every teacher has hand sanitizer. We have stations set up around the school building. Lots of hand sanitizing um, spray and gel and all kinds of hand sanitizer So. Definitely tell them to carry some if they want to. Thank you, Dana. <laughs> We're so excited to have the kids back in the building. It's been lonely around here. Yes, carrying backpacks is fine. Uh, we've always allowed kids to carry backpacks too, so that's probably important to know. <laughs> I know, I, I will tell you, Dana, that the, the heavy equipment teachers can't wait to have kids on equipment. We have some really cool new equipment that he will be so excited about. Um, new tractors that he will absolutely love. So um, they are so excited about having kids on the equipment again. And our new diesel lab is completely remodeled and ready to go. The whole building, any, any of you who have students in building three, it is a brand new building. They have completely remodeled building three. So. All of the classrooms are new. We have all kinds of new equipment and everything's ready to go. We can't wait to have kids in the building. It is super exciting. If anybody on here has freshmen who are coming back, we did a walkthrough last week where we offered an opportunity for our freshmen to come in and at least walk through the school. Uh, for many of them, this will be, you know, we're, we're in April and it'll be the first time they've been in the school building. So we did do a, a walkthrough event last week. Um, if you were unable to make that, not to worry, we will have people guiding students to all of their classrooms. Um, around the building and making sure that your kiddos get where they need to go for uh, first period. And I know our freshmen are particularly nervous about coming into the building for the first time in April, but we'll, we'll get them everywhere they need to go. Um, yes, all classes have hand sanitizer. Every classroom is set up with a, with a, you know, pumps of hand sanitizer. We also have them in the hallways. 
um, san hand sanitizer dispensers in the hallways at the door in the cafeteria in the gym. Um, we have hand sanitizers all over the building. <laughs> And we will give kids hand sanitizer bottles too when they when they come on the first day. Um, we do have some extra face masks here, so if something happens and you know uh, somebody forgets one um, or they um, you know break one while they're here, you know maybe the ear thing breaks on them, um, we have some extras here at school that we can help cover them for the day. Wednesday will be a deep cleaning day here in the building. So um, the majority of our staff will be working from home on Wednesdays too, so that they can do some deep cleaning um, here in the building. And um, every classroom will be sanitized each evening uh, with, you know, we have uh, the ionizer sanitizer machines that go through and sanitize the room, fog the room. So that'll happen every evening. Yes, Ms. Brewer is so excited to see faces in her classroom. We're all so excited to see faces in this building. We can't wait to get kids back. We are ready. Thank you to all the teachers who are on tonight. I appreciate it. All right, any other questions? All right, well, I'm going to post one more time. Whoops. Are the desks, et cetera, sanitized or wiped down between each class? Um, students can choose to wipe them. We have, uh, have, you know, sanitizing wipes that can be used on the tables. Um, they, the room itself won't be you know, fully sanitized in between each class period, but desks can, can be uh, wiped down in between each class. And the tabletops and all of the areas where students eat um, get cleaned in between. They get a deep sanitation in between each lunch period. We've built some extra time into the daily schedule to allow for um, extended cleaning in between lunch periods. I'm going to post the document one more time just for anybody who um, needs it. That's a Google Doc that has all of the specifics about our schedule, arrival, dismissal. There's a link to our webpage, um, return to school webpage, um, also in that document. Um, everything that you might need to know is in that document. If, if your questions aren't completely answered there, please feel free to send me an email um, or you can call the school. We are working here in the building this week and uh, the phones are, phones are open. Uh, the office is open from 8 to 2.30 every day, so if you need anything, please feel free to call. Um, we can get that ready for you and answer any questions that you might have. Uh, 
Um, why do they need their Chromebook if they're in school? That's a good question. So we're going to continue with using Google Classroom. Um, the Google Classroom will still be the, you know, the, the digital classroom space for every student in every class. Um, and we also want to make sure that our kids can still collaborate and they can do that through Google Classroom. So everybody will still be using Google Classroom and we'll st we, uh, we've still tried to streamline everything so that we're not handing out lots of paper and, um, you know, needing to be up and moving around and things like that in the classroom. Um, so Google Classroom assists with that. So that's why they need their Chromebooks, because Google Classroom will still be our primary um, you know, our, our primary area for all work to be turned in, for all assignments, for group work, for, you know, all of the things that go into having a class um, will still be used. We'll still be using Google Classroom. It's OK if you don't want him to bring his personal laptop. You don't have to. We do have some Chromebooks here at school that um, he'll be able to use while he's here during the school day. Um, if he doesn't want to bring his laptop, that's OK. We have some extras here. I can completely understand that. A lot of our students have school issued Chromebooks, so they are able to bring those back and forth. They're smaller, they're easier to carry around. So if uh, if you you know if your kid's been working on a personal laptop or a personal computer at home, I completely understand why you wouldn't wouldn't why you wouldn't want them to bring that. That's fine. But we will continue to use Google Classroom. Uh, there shouldn't be a lot to carry. We haven't done a whole lot. Like I said, we're trying to, you know, not have a whole lot of paper and things like that that they would need to carry around. Um, yeah, orchestra class is a lot. Um, he can drop his instrument off before he goes to his first period class and then, you know, pick it up at the end of the day on the way to catch the bus. So he won't have to carry his orchestra instrument around with him the entire day. It'd just be a matter of getting it here and getting it to the classroom. So um, it, I understand that, you know, with an orchestra instrument that that might be a lot to carry around, but he won't have to carry the orchestra instrument around all day. He can leave that in the orchestra room. Any other questions that I can answer? Good, I'm glad. Any anytime, please call again if you have any other questions. We're we're here all weeks and I know that Monday's a big day. Um you know, we've been out for now. It's been over a year, which is hard to believe. Um, but it, it is going to be a lot to get used to and all of the changes. And um, so if you have any questions, please call. We're happy to answer any questions that you might have. Somebody's here all day. Yes, definitely is a crazy long spring break. <laughs> hard to believe. March 13th was the last day that we had students here in the building for school. March 13th of last year. So we're very excited to have our building full of kids again. We sure have missed them. They may not have missed us as much as we miss them, but we miss them. <laughs> Um, if you have any seniors, we do have some senior activities planned. Um, so tell your seniors to look out for those. If um, if I have any parents of seniors on here tonight, um, tell your tell your seniors to look out for those. Uh, Miss Smith, Miss Hyman, Mr. James, and Miss Alvy are all sending out some information about senior activities that'll be coming up over the next several weeks. Um, we have something planned for each week. 
because uh, we do want to give our seniors some opportunity to, to you know, really enjoy their senior year. So um, we're going to do our best to provide some activities for them so that they can still celebrate. Um, they've lost a lot. They lost their junior ring ceremony as well as the majority of their senior year. So we want to do whatever we can to make sure that we celebrate safe and they give them some opportunities. So if you have any seniors, tell them to look out for a message from their counselors about um, senior activities that'll be coming up. That's on the horizon as well. All right, well, I'm gonna sign off for the night. Um, again, if you have any questions, please feel free to call or um, you know, I answer emails at all odd hours of the morning and night. So you can always send me an email if you have questions. Um, and we hope to see everybody back on Monday. We're so excited to welcome people back next week. Thank you all so much for tuning in tonight. Thanks, Dana.